eye health. So the, I, I was surprised to see that omega-3 may help with kind of macular degeneration and dry eyes. Um, have you, no. yeah, have you looked at that? Yeah, we, we've looked somewhat at that. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, dry eye, it, that makes, that's pretty logical. I mean, basically mm -hmm. it's an inflammatory process mm -hmm. and the omega-3s are able to s slow that down. Uh, not in every study. It, that's true for about everything. Um, not in every study. Mm -hmm. um, macular degeneration, um, there have been some big studies where omega-3 didn't add any benefit. Other studies where it did add benefit. Uh, so it's still, it, it's juries out on mm -hmm. how omega-3s would help that. But a, as with everything with omega-3, um, there are, are s positive studies that show some benefit. There's virtually no downside. Mm -hmm. There's no risk. Um, so if there's any benefit at all and there's no risk, the risk benefit ratio is favorable. And so it's, it's worth getting your omega-3 mm -hmm. levels up. Um, even if we don't know yet all the answers, and we probably never will, we know enough answers, I think, to say everybody ought to try to get their omega-3 index up to the like the levels are in Japan, which is 8, 9, 10%, which is, and of course, the Japanese have the longest longevity in the, in the world. Uh, we're, I think in America, we're number 32 in longevity, like four and a half years behind Japan in terms of longevity. And I, I think there's, it's not a coincidence that the Japanese have the highest omega-3 levels either. So, okay, one last one, which is brain health. So, yeah. <laughs> right. so, d d d so one thing is, um, so do the, do the omega-3s get into the brain? Do they get through the blood-brain barrier? And kind of how do they do that? They do get through. Uh, well, mm -hmm. at least DHA gets through. Um, mm -hmm. We know that there is a, a fairly newly discovered receptor on the blood brain barrier. Uh, that's a long acronym. It's not important. Um, mm -hmm. That does pick up DHA primarily in a, in, in a special chemical form that the body makes. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily eat it that way. Um, it's called a lysophospholipid. Uh, and that does transport DHA in the brain and people that have defects in that transporter have low brain DHA and cognitive impairment. Uh, so it does get in, uh, the brain is, uh, DHA is by far the highest, um, uh, omega-3 fatty acid in the brain. And it's one of the highest of any kind of fatty acid in the brain. Uh, there's a lot of DHA in the brain from, you know, from, uh, pregnancy on, uh, your brain is growing in DHA content. It's there for a reason. We, and we don't know all the reasons, uh, but it's, it's certainly important to have higher DHA levels. And we've been studying DHA in dementia, mm. uh, which is uh, something in the Framingham study we recently published that if you look at people in Framingham and we measured their red blood, we measured their red blood cell DHA levels. Again, that's 85% of the omega-3 index, mm. the DHA component. Uh, so red cell DHA levels were... Uh, the higher they were, the lower the risk of developing dementia over about an eight-year period in Framingham. Um, and I think it was uh, roughly at, at the highest, at, at like the highest 20 percentile of DHA, mm -hmm. red cell, red cell DHA. Mm -hmm. Not brain, We can't measure brain DHA. We can only measure red cell DHA. Um, they're 50% the lower risk of, of developing Alzheimer's, um, which was impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, but you know, the, the question always to come up well, you say you're 60 years old and you want to start taking DHA. Are you going to bump up your brain DHA levels by taking supplements? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think it gets, uh, I just haven't seen good evidence that you can really raise your brain DHA levels acutely. I think right. what it takes is what I always advocate is that, that you're taking DHA fatty acids from the time you're a teenager, from your, in your 20s or 30s, it, it's a long, long-term benefit. Uh, having a high omega-3 index, which is you only get by eating more omega-3, um, over decades is what's the most health-giving, uh, not just starting when you're in your mid-60s and start taking fish oil pills. Um, 
uh, it's not going to hurt you, but I'm not sure you should be expecting too many benefits at that. With you know that horse is pretty far out of the barn. Well, it's better than not doing it. Right? Better than not doing it. right, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, if, and there's a lot of other good things that can come of it, you know. But um, actually, raising the the content of DHA in your brain by taking supplements has really not been shown in adults, as far as I know. Right. But in part, like you said, it's very difficult to measure because you can't biopsy right. the brain. Yeah. I mean, people looked at, at, at cerebrospinal fluid and mm. seen that you give EPA, DHA, or actually you give e, EPA gets there too. I mean, mm. it's, it's stuff. But DHA primarily, if you supplement people, CSF levels will go up in DHA. So there's more in the fluid that's bathing the brain anyway, which is a good step mm. forward. Whether it actually gets incorporated in the neuron membranes is, is another question. Stress is an underlying cause of many health issues. And while most people focus on finding relief from stress through meditation or other forms of mental exercise, the stress may be caused by lack of a key nutrient. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for our health because it plays many crucial roles, supporting muscle and nerve function. It also impacts the release of stress hormones like cortisol and blocks the activity of stimulating neurotransmitters, leading to a more peaceful and restful state. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I are taking Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough has the full spectrum of seven types of magnesium, specifically formulated to reach every tissue in our body for maximum health benefits. One of the important reasons we chose Magnesium Breakthrough is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, free of chemicals and fillers. To get 10% discount on Magnesium Breakthrough, simply go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern. Use the code modern10. Thank you for your support. Okay, so changing tack a little bit. So do saturated fats raise cholesterol? Relative to not eating them. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Right, right. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And okay. they, but the more important question I think is where you're going is do they increase your risk for heart disease? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's been a, a little contentious in recent years. Um, mm. Some, I guess I looked at a meta analysis from last year and, and that was showing that higher intakes of saturated fat are related to increased risk for uh, total mortality, mm. if not heart disease per se. And actually heart disease too. Uh, so like a 10% increased risk over having lower levels, high levels of, of saturated fat. Uh, and, and you can raise your blood saturated fat levels by eating more saturated fat. Um, it's It doesn't move as fast as the omega-3 levels move, but it's, it's it moves. Mm. Okay. So what, what I'd like to ask is, so what what's your health protocol are you happy to share that what do you do and how much how do you keep your omega-3 levels up but um what, what other things to do you do to stay healthy yeah well i, I keep my levels up by taking omega-3 supplements um, okay. and eating fish commonly but mm -hmm. certainly not necessarily twice a week like i should be we need to get into that uh i exercise in the mornings i um I wear a seatbelt. I don't smoke. <laughs> I pick my parents well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> variety of things. But no, I I don't I don't have a. Um, I mean, like like some people might. I haven't got a, a list of sixteen things I'm doing. Um, try to sleep seven to eight hours <laughs> a night. You know, um, don't do stupid things. No. Right. No. Okay, that that's cool. Something, something like that. <laughs> it's not much of a regimen, but it's it's here I am. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so you're still doing some research. So what, what, what's yeah. your current focus in terms of what, what, what are you looking at? And so you started also, you started the, um, that, the organization. The, uh, that the has the research institute, yeah. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that? But what is it looking at at the moment? Um, what, it, what it is, it's really a group. It's a virtual group of, of scientists from really around the world uh, who... Uh, are very interested in the relationship between blood or really blood fatty acid levels, 
primarily mm-hmm. omega three, but we're we're agnostic. We'll look at other fatty acids too. We're interested in the relationship between blood fatty acid levels and disease, mm-hmm. and so we are constantly do, doing studies where we've we have data sets, and that's really what our what we're our strength is. We have access to many many data sets of big studies that have already been done. The data is in the bank somewhere. And nobody's even doing anything with it, you know. So we're asking or of 10 different cohorts, tell us what your omega-3 levels were in your people. And then we're going to look to see if they developed heart failure or if they developed uh, gallstones or if they developed arthritis, you know, any number of conditions, cancer, whatever. Um, so we're, we're largely what's called epidemiologic research mm-hmm. with population research. Um, observational. We are not doing any um, studies where you actually recruit people sick or healthy and give them fish oil. I mean, that that was my old career. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't do that anymore. Now we are looking at, because we're trying to, to find how important is it that, well, we all know that measuring your cholesterol level is something doctors will do, and they do it to measure your risk for heart disease. You have high cholesterol, that's, you know, doctor gets all excited, get, puts you on a drug or tells you to go on a diet, lower your cholesterol, lower your cholesterol, because it, you can't, you can't feel if you have a high cholesterol or not. It's, it's just something measurable in a blood test. We think the omega-3 index is just like that. Mm-hmm. And we think it's an important, actually a more important predictor of, of future health than your cholesterol level is. And so we want to continue to build the database that, and if, if I've got, I mean, I can only write one paper at a time myself, but if I've got 10 people around the world who, if I just feed them the, the data and the results, they can write the papers <laughs> so we can amplify uh, getting more information about the benefits of omega-3 in a um, variety of conditions by what we're doing in our fatty acid research institute. Right. Is, is there any special thing you're looking at? that you particularly are focused on right now? Right now, dementia. Um, dementia. More and more, we, we need more data on dementia and we want to understand if uh, other fatty acids, uh, do the omega-6 fatty acids, for example, um, have any impact on whether you develop dementia or not? We don't know. Do the trans fatty acids, the ones that mm-hmm. you were know, in hydrogenated oils, fats, uh, they're still around. Uh, they're bad. Do, mm-hmm. do they have an effect. Um, we're also looking at this kind of intersection between ge- genetics and nutrition, because there may be some people who have, well, like for dementia, the, the common genetic predisposition marker is, is called ApoE4 mm-hmm. genotype. Uh, and if you've got, so the question is, if you've got ApoE4, do you need more omega-3 than somebody doesn't have it? Um, mm-hmm. Are you at higher risk for developing uh, Alzheimer's disease. Um, right. So we're looking at those things and trying to think of what other two or three studies are working on that. Um, uh, certainly looking more on all cause mortality. Uh, there's a thing called the UK United Kingdom Biobank, mm-hmm. which is a huge, a huge data set that we have access to. And, and a lot of everybody has access to it if they can figure out how to do it. Um, and we're looking at, that's where we found the relationship between omega-3 index and, um, COVID by studying that, that cohort, um, um, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, uh, risk for stroke, risk for atrial fibrillation, uh, variety of things like that we're studying, um, in different stages of, of development. Okay, so thank you so much for uh, joining us. So where can people find out all this information that you're currently studying? Um, f- f- go to the F- Fatty Acid Research Institute website. Um, mm-hmm. you can learn more about what we're doing there. And it's, it's I think that's www.faresinst, Fatty Acid Research Institute.com. Okay. Or Omega Quant. Mm-hmm. Omegaquant.com. You can get blood tests uh, there through 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 that um, website. Right, and they um, have a they have like a blog on the yeah on the Omega Quant with, with a lot of a lot information of there. Right, right, exactly. Which is great. 
Okay. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Been great talking to you. My pleasure. Great questions, Richard. Enjoyed it. Thank you.